Hello everyone, Steven here and I'd like to take a break from our regularly scheduled programming to do a short video on something that many of you have brought to my attention that I didn't realize would be that big of a deal. And that is my tattoos. It seems many of you have noticed that uh, in the time between my last batch of videos and my recent batch of videos that I have acquired several pieces of art that are permanently affixed to my arm in the form of subdermal inking. Uh, tattooing. And uh, I, I wanted to go through and show you mine in order to prove to you that I'm not some kind of hardened prison gangster thug uh, or whatever it is that you thought I was. Um, basically I started getting tattoos last September and the thinking was to get something very important to me which I would not regret ever. Uh, it's very important if you plan on getting tattoos that you not regret it since you'll have it forever. I mean literally for the rest of your existence. Um, there are removal options but they're extremely costly, extremely painful, and sometimes ineffective. So without further ado I'm going to talk about the tattoos that I have now and my plans for the future which are not super complex. I'm, I'm actually going in to get more tattooing done tomorrow, but I figured I would do a video now before I get all bloody and gross again, as is uh, the case when you get tattoos done. So the first thing I did was the top half of my arm uh, and just the outside here. And this is kind of just like, I called it a science medley. It's all kinds of sciencey things that I liked. The scale is obviously totally off. Um, so I'll just show you what we have. Uh, this is a galaxy with our black hole in the center. We have some planets around it, and my tattoo artist is a big Star Wars fan, so we have some planets from Star Wars universe, if you recognize them. Um, in the center here, we have a uh, DNA double helix, just kind of in the traditional model, the way that it's normally shown. Let's see if I can get up here. Uh, on the top, we have some, some circuitry, which many of you no is extremely important to me as a computer person. And on the back we have an atom. You can see our our nucleus and we have some electron particles here here and something floating over here from the atom. It's all kind of you know interspersed and symbolic and whatnot. So from there uh, I had this for a while by itself and then I decided to finish the rest of my arm. So from there I went down to get this guy. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it. So this is a skull of a human ancestor called Homo ergaster, lived about 1.8 million years ago, and was the first hominid. It's the first uh, truly, you know, human-like ancestor that we have. And uh, this particular species was known for uh, having used tools and used fire. So that's kind of interesting. We have a candle on top of the skull, which is in art kind of like a symbol for knowledge. We have a hand axe, which is one of the things recovered at a site where these guys were found buried. So they would take a rock and uh, craft it into a hand axe so they could cut things and use it as a tool or a weapon. And on top of all that, or underneath all that, we have a copy of The Origin of the Species by Charles Darwin with Dewey Decimal Number and a bookmark with Ergaster, this dude's name, oh, that dude's name. So obviously all very important stuff here. This kind of uh, is just a reminder of our humble origins. You know, we, we weren't always the super intelligent beings that we are now. And this book really is important to me because it was the first, you know, widely accepted published piece of work that showed our origins in a uh, in a natural way rather than a supernatural way. So instead of a creation story, we have this that can show us where we came from. So from there, I kind of moved down the arm here. I got a really cool looking microscope with a hydra, which is a uh, very, very, very small organism that reproduces by budding. What it does is it grows a small version of itself and then eventually when that gets mature enough, it detaches, and then it'll grow another version of itself, and so on. And uh, so it's just like, um, you know, another classification of organism. Like up here we have our, 
our you know mammal hominid and everything and then here we have microscopic organism then this is a trilobite fossil it was one of the first fossils that we found and it's one of the oldest that we found so it kind of showed us that life goes back a lot further than we initially thought so next I'm going to show you my elbow area I have two finches that are slightly different uh, as you may know the finches are uh, birds that Charles Darwin observed on the Galapagos Islands while he was writing his book The Origin of Species and the finches are holding uh, pea plants which uh, were what Gregor Mendel used when he was formulating uh, genetics as we know it now and uh, so I thought that was kind of a you know cool thing for them to be doing so we got some like pea plants and flowers and stuff so that's on my elbow not a fun place to be tattooed and lastly on the bottom of my forearm I have Occam's razor literally it's a razor <laughs> with with Occam's name on it as if it were the brand and uh, so Occam's razor which I am not sure if I've talked about it or not just the principle that we use in science and philosophy and you can really use it anywhere and uh, if you don't know anything about it you should definitely look it up and uh, yeah so that is the tattoos that I have right now they're all very important to me very important different areas the top is kind of just like a tribute to different uh, scientists really I mean the galaxy is really my nod towards Carl Sagan the DNA towards uh, you know uh, Watson and Crick, the guys who uncovered that and kind of gave us an insight to modern genetics. Uh, the circuitry to people like Alan Turing and all the other guys, you know, like the, the first hackers in the 70s that really gave us modern computing. And our Adam to people like, you know, Albert Einstein and these guys who gave us uh, a greater understanding of how the universe works. And the bottom, you could say, is a tribute to the evolutionary biologists like Charles Darwin and Richard Dawkins and these guys who have helped us understand our origins in a natural way rather than supernatural way which I think is really cool that we can say hey we know where we come from and it wasn't the Garden of Eden oh sorry so uh, what's left to do on this arm basically getting the skin places filled in with some you know with some color and shading and stuff to kind of tie everything together because it looks a bit odd with just the pieces in there and uh, after that who knows? I'm open to ideas. Uh, I can't do the same thing on the other arm because I have uh, this birthmark that can't be tattooed over. So I have the first, you know, three quarters of it available. So we'll see what happens there. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys that I'm not a total hooligan. I am true to my science roots. <laughs> I'm a science OG. So if you have any questions about tattoos or the tattooing process, I'm happy to answer them. It's a lot of fun. It's expensive and very painful, but fun after, you know, I mean, it's fun during it if you're cool with pain. And it's definitely fun after once everything is healed. And uh, the only thing is, if you're going to become an engineer, you have to wear long sleeves uh, for the rest of your life. So, worth it? Yes, I, I think so. Anyway, thank you very much, and goodbye.